Welcome to Math Mini Lessons, and in this lesson, fourth graders, we're going to practice adding and subtracting tens and hundreds as fractions. When I say tens and hundreds, I'm thinking if we have a decimal, how can we also represent them and add them in fractional form? While I model today's lesson, look to see how I do any of these three things. How I express the decimals in fractional form, how I create fractions and equivalent fractions. So for example, if I have a fraction as a tenth, how do I make sure that I can convert it to an equal fraction over a hundred? And then also how I add them together. I'm going to connect to something that we've been using a lot in classrooms, which are our base 10 pieces. I love these pieces because it's really easy to see the fractional parts. So for today's example, and for a fourth grade in general, we're going to use this flat piece to represent one. And our skinny pieces represent one tenth. Why? Because it takes 10 of them to make one. So I need 10 of these just to make one of these. And our unit bits over here are worth a hundredth because again, I need 10 of these just to make a skinny and I would need 10 skinnies to make this whole flat. Or you could just say I need, if you counted all of these, I would have 100 of these little pieces here. The other thing I want us to connect with is using our place value chart. And that's gonna help us make connections between our fractions and our decimals. So for my chart, I'm gonna just put place value tens, ones, here's my decimal, tenths, and hundredths. So we're gonna use that to also represent numbers and that's a really sound strategy. So for example, if I had the number one, and I'm gonna say 0.84, even though that's not mathematically correct, here's my decimal. Here's my one in the ones place, my eight is in the tenths place, and my four is in the hundredths place. That's super helpful because now if I were to write this in expanded form, I can write one plus eight tenths plus four hundredths. Or you can see this as one and 84 hundredths because my last digit is in the hundredths place. So I can use 84 of these little pieces, 84 of them, and so I can represent them as 84 out of 100. All right, let's get some practice in using just this number, 0 0.42, which of course I'm saying wrong. And let's say you were going to make this with base 10 pieces. Now, obviously we know that the big flat is equal to one. So if I have 0 0.42, what would be the simplest way, if I could only use one piece, either skinnies or bits, to make this number, which would you use? Well, you'd probably use the little bits. Because if I were using skinnies, I could use four skinnies, but that would only give me four tenths or 40 hundredths. Or I could make 42 of these little bits. Now, I'm not gonna draw all 42 little bits, so I kind of represent it like this, 42 little bits. But now let's put that in fractional form. I know my bits are hundredths, so I have 42 out of 100. So that's how I can represent in fractional form. Now, if you love the table method, like I do, you can always just draw yourself a quick little table, or sometimes we write the number in our mind, and I'm just gonna put ones to put the decimals, tenths, and hundredths. And now I'm just gonna copy in a number, decimal point, 42. And now, again, I can see how many pieces I would have. Yes, I could have four tens and two hundredths, or I can have 42 hundredths, which is also the right way to say it. So 42 hundredths, so the place to look is on your table. Look to see where that last digit is. That's gonna tell you what kind of uh, denominator you're going to have. So hit pause and jot this down into your notes. What is the sum of three tenths and four hundredths? The hard part is that both of these have different denominators. So I'm gonna give you two strategies to turn them into the same denominator. In the first one, let's look at this three tenths. And there's, I can represent that in two different ways. I could just have three skinnies and then just add four of the little bits. 
So if I had three skinnies, that's three tenths plus four hundredths. But that's not helping me because my denominators are not the same. So instead think, how many bits do you see here in these three skinnies? Well, out of all these, I know I can turn them into 30 bits. So that's more helpful. So instead of thinking of it as three tenths, I could think of it as 30 out of 100. And this will allow me to add them up with the four hundreds to get 34 out of 100. So you can do some of that converting in your mind or use your base 10 pieces to think, how can I break up the bigger piece into smaller pieces so I can add them together? This works very well with fractions that end in tenths or hundreds. However, when you take an actual test, you're not always gonna have base 10 pieces. So you might have to draw them or think about those conversions in your mind. But I'm gonna give you another strategy called property one. And this strategy, it just means multiplying by one. So we're gonna multiply by one to get an equivalent fraction. So watch what I mean. I want my three tenths to have a denominator of 100. So I'm gonna multiply it by a fraction that has the same numerator and denominator. I'm gonna multiply it by 10 over 10. Why? Because 10 times 10 is 100. And 30 times 10 is gonna give me 30. And why do these two numbers have to be the same? Because again, I'm multiplying by one so that my value doesn't change. Anytime we multiply a number by one, its value stays the same. Now, that I've changed three tenths, I've converted it to 30 over 100, now I can add these two fractions together. And get the same number, 34 out of 100. So this is another great strategy that you can use in order to add fractions that end in 10 and 100, because you can't add them till they have the same denominator. The shaded parts below represent a fraction. What is the sum of the fractions? So here I have two different models. What do you see and what do you notice? And how would you represent them as a fraction? I can see two possible ways, and I bet there are a whole bunch more, that we can represent these numbers. So for example, in this first part, do you see two tenths or do you see 20 over a hundredths? Both are correct absolutely correct either way so if you see two tenths I'm gonna put both of these here two tenths or 20 over a hundred um, you're probably seeing the skinnies first if you're seeing two tenths or you're counting up all the little pieces here now in the second one same thing what do you see what do you notice you might be seeing well I have two skinnies and six little bits so I could see two tenths plus six hundredths or you might be counting, I have 26 hundredths all together. So now my question is, think about which is the friendliest way? Which is the one that is easiest um, to add with? The one that's gonna give you the least amount of effort. And I would say it's the one where our fractions have the same denominators already. So here, instead of saying two tenths, it's help, more helpful to have 20 hundredths plus 26 hundredths. And we can add them up together and get 46 hundredths. Two tenths can get you there, but you're going to have an additional step. If you had two tenths, you'd have to go through the work, and it could might be mental, of changing this to 20 hundredths. Or you might, you might already be thinking, well, I'll just break this down into bits, and I'd have 20 bits. So that's it for today's lesson, Math Marbles. Remember, you could always go back to the criteria for success and think, how, how do I make sure that I know how to do all three of these things as I'm working through my problems? And if you're struggling on any one of them, like maybe you're still struggling turning these numbers into fractions or adding fractions with different denominators, turning them into like denominators, talk to an adult and say, this is the place I'm struggling with. This is the one I need more practice on and get that feedback and get that practice. That's all you need to become more confident in this. That's it for today's lesson. I will see you in the next one. Take care, Math Marbles. Bye.